welcome back. In this lecture 17, I will continue my discussion on emulsion polymerization and also give you some examples about common polymers that are synthesized by radical chain polymerization. And if time permits, I will talk about this RDRP polymerization. Now, let us uh, revisit the last slide uh, which we discussed in the last lecture. This is what the situation is at the beginning of the emulsion polymerization, where we have large droplets that are stabilized by surfactant molecules and we have monomer solen micelles and we have some dissolved monomer molecules. We have initial terms molecules which are dissolved and they are in equilibrium and also please note that the number of these monomer droplets are much lower compared to the number of this monomer solen surfactant micelles. As a result, the total surface area of this monomer solen surfactant micelles are about two orders of magnitude higher than the surface area of these droplets. So, any, any species which generates in this uh, aqueous medium, there is a highly chance or this is likely that it will collides more often with the um, this uh, monomer solen micelle than the monomer droplets. Okay, so, once we start the reaction by generating say if we are using some potassium persulfate as we shown in the examples, two examples I gave styrene butadiene rubber and acrylate example. If we heat it, the reaction mixture, the initiator molecule will basically now uh, we will generate this radical. Now, once this radicals generate, it will as we know that these monomer molecules which are present in the aqueous medium, though in small concentration, they will react with this uh, radical and we have further this and we go like this. Now, so this will continue for few more mass. Now, as you can imagine the monomers are not soluble in aqueous medium, then this chain oligomeric chain which have many molecular monomer molecule or few monomer molecules which will definitely expect it to be even lower soluble than the monomer in aqueous medium. Now, so there could be three possibilities about this oligomeric propagating radical. Once it can undergo normal termination reaction and get precipitated from the aqueous medium. Second, it can continue to capture few more monomer and get uh, longer in size and keep on continuing. And third, which is the more likely possibility that because this R is a hydrophilic part, because it is coming from a hydrophilic initiator molecule. And this part is basically hydrophobic because the monomers are not soluble in aqueous medium. As a result, this is like a surface active propagating radical, which does not like to be present in the aqueous medium. It will try to partition in some nonpolar region, like the micellar core, which is nonpolar, hydrophobic, or it can partition in the monomer droplet because inside the monomer droplets it is hydrophobic nonpolar. Now, as I discussed few times in last lecture as well as beginning of this lecture, because the surface area of this monomer solen micelles are much higher than the monomer droplets, most likelihood or it is certainly partition inside the 
my cell containing the monomer molecule. So, I, if I have this uh, my cells as I said these are charged in this case we are using anionic surfactant and this has some monomer dissolved in it. So, this radical propagating radical oligomeric now will partition inside this monomer solen micelle and it will start reacting with this monomers and propagating radical. So, basically now it has no problem about solubility it is soluble in this medium. So, it is like the, it likes this medium. So, there is no problem of solubility. So, now it will react with the monomer present in this micelle inside the micelle and the chain will grow inside this micelle. So, I if I use some other color So, if I use that new polymer chain at uh, this uh, yellow color, so maybe this will proceed, this uh, chain will proceed react with the monomer and proceed. Having this propagating chain end as a radical present. Now, once this monomer molecules get consumed, this monomer molecules get consumed inside the micelle because to maintain the equilibrium some monomer molecules which are present in the aqueous medium they will now partition inside the micelle and that propagating radical which was present it will capture this monomer molecules and it will grow the chain further before it get terminates once the second radical comes. If the second radical comes then if the second radical comes then immediately because the size of this particle is low this will terminate and when if another radical comes in it will again restart a new polymer chain by reacting with the monomers present. So, as a result what will happen the monomers which are present in the aqueous medium they will deplete concentration of the monomers will deplete. As a result to maintain the equilibrium the monomer droplets which are which are basically stabilized by surface molecule they will supply monomer to the aqueous medium to maintain the equilibrium. So, with time this monomer droplet large monomer droplet will keep on supplying the monomers to this growing micellar polymer particles, polymer particles in micelle. It will supply monomer to this micellar core through aqueous medium. So, monomer will come from the mono, uh, monomer droplets and then move this, uh, this micellar particle. Now, soon once this become larger then this will not say as it remain as a micellar it will become like a polymer particle and which is stabilized by micelle. So, it is which is stabilized by surfactant. So, it begins as a micellar solen particle, but as more and more monomer diffuses in from aqueous medium to this inside core which is hydrophobic this will become larger this will become larger and as a result we will get after some time not as a micelle, but as a polymer particles which are stabilized by this surfactant molecules. Now, to stabilize these surfactant molecules we require more surfactants. Now, where from those surfactant comes? There were surfactants present as a monomeric unit in the aqueous medium they will come and stabilize these growing polymer particles. 
So, soon this surfactant, the monomeric surfactant will be less, will the concentration will dip, deplete. So, the other micelles which were present as a monomer solvent micelle, they will now diffuse or disintegrate and supply surfactant monomer. So, basically the, uh, the micelles which are present where the polymerization reaction has not started with a micelle or solen micelle, they will now disintegrate and supply this surfactant as well as these monomers which were present in the medium. So, once again let me brief this situation. Once we start the polymerization, some initiator molecules which are soluble in aqueous medium, it will dissociate to produce R dot. Now, this will react with monomer and start this or initiate the polymer chain uh, which will further react with the monomers which are present in the solution and grow oligomeric chain. Now, this oligomeric chain has three possibilities. It can get terminated by reacting with some other radical and get precipitated and there is another chance where it can actually grow in size and then actually precipitate along with the active radical. Now, which can absorb or adsorb monomer from the medium and po start polymerization onto itself. So, basically it is not a micellar particle, it is a polymer particle itself. So, basically I have a oligomer which is precipitating out and it is absorbing more and more monomer from the medium and polymerization is happening by this. So, I have a polymer is getting produced and which is now stabilized by the surfactant molecules. So, I have this is the second possible I talked about and this is called uh, uh, um, heterogeneous nucleation, heterogeneous nucleation Now, this can there is also possibility that these polymer particles could coagulate them with themselves and form a larger particle and which can further adsorb monomers and polymer can happen. So, sometimes we also call this as a coagulation nucleation, but as I said that these possibilities are less, but the main possibilities are what I described in described in detail which is homogeneous nucleation. What is that? That once this oligomeric radicals get generated, it because it behaves like a surface active agent or surface tan because it has a hydrophilic head group and a long hydrophobic tail, it diffuses inside the monomer solvent micelle because their surface area is much higher than the monomer droplets and it start getting polymerized inside this micellar medium. And once this growth is grows in size, monomers get supplied, more and more monomers get supplied into this uh, growing polymer chain and these monomers get basically uh, compensated from the monomer droplets and it grows in size and you get a polymer particle, growing polymer particle stabilized by surfactant and these surfactants get supplied by dissociation of the un or inactive micelles which get dissociated when supplied more surfactant. Now, also one thing please note that this always have one, one active radical. Once the second radical gets in because the size of this particle is low, they will immediately react with each other and terminate the chain. Till a new propagating radical comes in which again restart a new chain basically. So, basically this monomer solen particle or a polymer particle, it can have either one active radical or it cannot have, it can have 0 radical. So, basically it is 
either stay as a dormant particle or a reactive particle when there is a one polymer uh, propagating radical. So, basically so the first oligomeric radical species uh, generates which can terminate in aqueous phase to produce species uh, that are surfactant like or continue to propagate until they reach a critical size which they become surface active and basically gets inside the micellar core and start um, uh, basically a new polymer chain or it can grow still further until they reach another critical size at which they become insoluble in the aqueous pen and precipitate from it and on top of that they can start uh, polymerization reaction. So, this is a homogeneous nucleation and this is heterogeneous nucleation. So, please note that there is no polymerization inside the monomer droplets as we described the surface area of monomer droplets are much much lower compared to the micellar uh, surface area and the system in this scenario which we call interval 1 have 3 particles monomer droplets which are nothing but supplying monomer with time to the active polymer particles and inactive micelles which basically supplies uh, surfactant and dissolved monomers with time to the active particles and active micelle or polymer particles. Now, this continue till more and more particles generate active particles generate as, as we get more and more initiator molecules coming more and more initiating radicals coming in more and more, more and more active particles generates. Once after some time basically at around 10 to 15 percent conversion the all the micellar micelles basically in the inactive micelles are not present disappears from the system which means there is no new micellar particle or polymer particles which is getting generated. So, at, a, at the end of the interval 1 the number of active particles or polymer particles remain same. So, only going forward what can happen that monomer can come in from the monomer pool of monomer droplets and polymerization can happen within this micellar or polymer particles. So, that is what this interval 2 starts where basically the concentration of monomer within the particle remain constant and once these monomers are consumed they are getting they basically get compensated by from the monomer droplets and the number of these active particles which is from the micelles origin is from micellar um, particles or polymer particles per unit volume of the latex typically, typically is 10 to the 16 to 10 to the 18 and they remain same. And uh, since the number of particles remain same, the rate of polymerization is also constant because the polymerization is happening, happening within these particles. So, if the number of such particles remain same, the rate of polymerization also remains same and this is the time we call interval 2, where the number of particles remain same. Some, par, some particles are active and some bon, poly, um, particles are dormant which keep on changing as we new and new radicals get inside these particles and monomers get supplied from the monomer droplets to these active particles and further polymerization take place and these particles grow in size slowly till the monomer pool supplies monomer from its droplet. So, once this 
monomer droplets consume gets consumed there is no practically there is no monomer present in the aqueous medium or as a pool then whatever monomers which has gone in this particle they will continue to react with this propagating radical and generate polymer and so the effectively now as there is no new monomer supply from outside the monomer concentration within this active particle slowly comes down as a result the rate of reaction also comes down. So, if I see what is the um, three region if I plot conversion versus time at the beginning where is a stage 1 or interval 1 where the number of particles active particles increases because more and more radicals propagating radicals are partitioning in micelle monomer solid in micelle. So, more and more particles get generated. So, reaction rate is higher in increases with more number and when this surfactant gets consumed from the system from the aqueous medium then no more particle can generate no new more particle can generate as a result the radical the reaction becomes fixed. So, rate of reaction becomes same which is the interval 2 where the monomer gets supplied from the monomer pool to the active particle and once that supply is over because the monomer droplets are consumed then only thing happen whatever monomer which are present in the active or those particles they get reacted. So, the concentration of monomer inside the particle comes down and reaction rate becomes lower. So, we have a third interval in this case. So, interval 2 we have no monomers of micellar surfactant, monomers in droplet, monomer in polymer particle and constant number of particles and interval 3 no monomer droplets, monomer in polymer particles which get reacted and constant number of particles. So, if you talk about kinetics it is little different than the normal radical chain polymerization. So, rate of polymerization now in case of rate of polymerization now we will discuss to solely in terms of interval 2 onwards the interval 2 and 3. At the beginning we are not talking about the rate at uh, interval 1 because there the number of monomer or number of particles are not fixed. So, basically the rate actually uh, depends upon both how the numbers of particles are generating as well as the inherent reaction rate within those particles. So, we will restrict the discussion rate of polymerization in interval 2 onwards which is the maximum time the reaction remain in the active form. Now, rate of polymerization in this case is given by rate of polymerization in a particle or per particle multiplied by number of such particles per unit volume or concentration of such particles. So, RPP is the rate of polymerization per particle and in P is the number of such particles per unit volume in aqueous phase. So, within a particle the rate is given by the normal radical chain polymerization Kp and concentration of monomer and concentration of radical species. Now, if the number of radical species within a particle is n, then this is the average number of radicals per particle, then if we divide by Avogadro number, then we will get the concentration of this radical. So, we get the rate, this is the monomer concentration and this is the number of average number of particles per particle. So, we divide uh, by Avogadro number to get the concentration. Now, what about the average number of radicals per particle? Now, we discussed that we will basically restrict our discussion to the simplest situation which we call Smith Ewart case 2 condition and in this case we are considering the radical once get adsorbed or come inside the monomer solid micelle it cannot dissolve. Okay. 
So, it cannot once it comes inside the particle it cannot escape once captured. The particles are so small we I just discussed earlier also that it is so small that two radical species cannot exist independently they as soon as they come in it will basically get terminated by bimolecular reaction. So, this is what we have seen and uh, the particle then remains dormant once this second radical comes in and the termination reaction happened there is no, it, it remains as a particle remains as a dormant species till entry of another radicals which initiate the propagation and new chain formation starts. So, on average each particle contains a propagating radical one propagating radical or 0. So, either the particles contain one active radical or no radical. So, basically half the time it stays as an active particle and half the time it stays as a uh, dormant particle. So, on average it has a n equals to half. So, on average this it, it has a half uh, n value is half. So, it is a half number of um, average particle. So, now if we go back and get this uh, rate. Now, what is the how to get this number of particle? I am not going into discussion in detail. So, this number of particles is given by this expression where uh, r r is the rate of initiation of radical species and a is the area occupied by the unit uh, weight of surfactant. This is the weight of concentration of weight concentration of surfactant and this rate at which a particle grows its volume which is basically linearly with time once the polymer is initiated. And value of this number of not n number of particles can be very widely dependent on the reaction formula and condition used. And during the interval 1 the number of particles increases during interval 3 the concentration of monomer decreases within each particles. So, if we combine those two expression rate of um, polymerization per particle and number of such particles or concentration of particles we get this expression. So, these are the typical values which I am not going in detail and we can also derive the expression of average number average degrees of polymerization to get this expression. I am not going in detail how to derive this, but you can um, uh, take this as uh, uh, as a um, case. So, in the if you look at these two expression rate of polymerization and degree of polymerization in those both case we can basically we can now increase R p and degree of polymerization by increasing the number of particles. So, if basically if we increase the surfactant concentration in the medium we basically can increase the number of such particle and we can increase if required we can increase the rate of polymerization as well as the, the size or molecular weight of the resulting polymer. Now, this happened because the propagating radicals are basically segregated into different compartments different active particles. In normal radical chain polymerization they are not they are able they are basically all present in same medium as a result they immediately the concentration goes up they basically undergo bimolecular termination reaction, but in this as a result the molecular weight comes down, but in this case as we can separate basically as we separate this uh, propagating radical into different compartments we basically can generate rate of polymerization higher without compromising the molecular weight. Now, benefit and applications of emulsion polymerization because we are doing like just like a suspension polymerization excellent heat transfer is possible relatively low viscosity of the prote, uh, product latex uh, at high polymer concentration and it has the ability to control the particle morphology because we can control the surfactant concentration, monomer concentration and so on to form a core cell particle and we can actually add a second monomer to make a graft polymerization from the core of the these particles. And major advantage is that 
this is because it is a this latex is a water borne polymer we are we basically have the polymer in in water medium there is no or low emission of volatile organic compounds or VACs. So, it is an environmentally friendly alternative to solvent bone polymers especially for coating applications. If, if you have a organic solvent bone polymer in during coating application the lot of this vaporization happen and it is a toxic or environmentally unfriendly situation. And polymers prepared by emulsion polymerization are used either directly in latex form uh, for example, emulsion paints, waterborne adhesive paper coatings, binders and so on. And it can be also if required can be isolated by coagulation. We can basically add salt to basically remove the, um, the stabilizer surfactant molecules to coagulate or we can use for spray drying of the latex uh, for example, synthetic rubbers and thermoplastics. I just uh, will quickly go through one more uh, emulsion type polymerization, but mini emulsion name suggests that mini emulsion means the size of the emulsion particles are uh, even smaller. So, in this case nothing happens basically from the beginning we generate smaller micellar particles in large number. So, that we do not require to generate more and more active particles with time basically at the beginning itself we have large number. So, that all the radicals can be accommodated in those. Uh, in small emulsion particles, mini emulsion particles. As a result, we get small, finally we get small particles, emulsion particles and we call that product, product as a mini emulsions. So, basically the objective was to control the uh, number of particles by starting the polymerization with a mini emulsion that compromises mon monomers droplets which are sufficiently small typically uh, this is the diameter and large enough number so that it can efficiently capture all the radicals. And in this case nucleation happen within the or the polymerization starts within the mini, mini emulsion monomer droplets uh, which becomes um, polymer particles and uh, in this case the number of particles defined as the number of mini emulsion droplets present in the start of the polymers. And once uh, the polymer produced within the mini emulsion droplets, it become monomer solvent droplets and polymers continues, continues in much same as the interval 3. So, we do not need to supply any more uh, monomers from outside. So, basically when the monomers within this mini emulsion get consumed, the reaction is over. We can use the similar technique uh, where we can use a cross linker then we can actually make micro or this technique or emulsion techniques in, in case of just making the polymer we can add a uh, basically a cross linker. So, that we can make a cross link gel or cross link network type as emulsion and we call micro gel those things. And uh, so, micro gels are cross link sub micron where particles prepared by emulsion poly copolymerization where mono and multi functional monomers are produced network polymers uh, which are insoluble water in certain condition, but under some condition the particles the polymers actually miscible water, but they cannot be cannot get soluble in the water because of cross their cross link. So, basically this get swell. So, micro micro gels can swell uh, because they cannot get dissolved uh, because of the cross links and they are nowadays getting useful in, in several application uh, mostly in biomedical applications uh, and which basically takes about advantage of their swelling in some condition and desoiling in some conditions like uh, if we use some temperature sensitive polymers like polyene isopropyl acrylamide then just varying the temperature of the aqueous solution we can have the micro gel swell or deswell and by doing that it can release the drug or some other particles uh, some other molecules which are inside the micro gels that can be release, released by controlling the outside condition in this case. So, they are very useful in diagnostics and control release. Now, with this I will stop and uh, I will uh, just, just uh, let me complete this slide and then I will stop. Uh, Basically, this is this is known to you that like any other 
chemical processes uh, polymerization can be also done by batch processes, semi continuous processes or semi batch processes or as a continuous processes and you probably know these processes in batch process all the reactions reactants are present from beginning and in semi continuous or semi batch processes some ingredients are added in between and in case of continuous uh, the reactants are added, added continuously and the polymer is uh, polymers are also taken out continuously to keep a balance of input and output. So, with this I will uh, stop this lecture and next uh, lecture basically I will uh, describe few common uh, polymers uh, which are made by radical chain polymerization and talk about living chain living radical polymerization technique.